Hey guys, Sean here. Um, if you can't tell by the cloak, it's, an, it's time for a Harry Potter review. And this review will be on the third movie, oh, upside down, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. And before I get started, this is actually the only movie in the franchise that I have on full screen. I have all the other ones on widescreen. This is the only full screen DVD I have. I don't know why. Um, Someday I do plan to get it widescreen so I can have them all, you know, match. But for right now, I'm fine with the full screen DVD. Because I figure, hey, at least I have a movie. It's better than not having it at all, you know? But anyway, you're here for the review, obviously. <laughs> um, so, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban is a 2004 uh, American fantasy film. This time, this film is directed by Alfonso Cuaron. Not Chris Columbus, who directed the last two movies. However, Chris Columbus does produce this movie. Um, this is also in two hours and 22 minutes, which I think is the shortest of the three. I think. I don't know. I haven't, I have to look at the first two movies again. Um, this was released June 4th, 2004, which I saw at the theaters. Had fun. I saw it in the drive-in, and no, this was not the first time I saw this movie since then. No, I've been a fan of this movie since. I've seen the movie numerous times since. But I saw it in the drive-in theater, had fun, you know. Probably one of my favorite uh, theatrical experiences, I guess you said. Um, so yeah, this was released June 4th, 2004, with a budget of $130 million, and it made $796.7 million. Sweet. Uh, this movie, like the other, like most of the fran most of the franchise was was written by Steve Clovers and produced by and based on the book of the same name by J.K. Rowling, like most of the movies. <laughs> um, the story follows Harry Potter's third year at his at Hogwarts as he is informed that a prisoner named Sirius Black has escaped from Azkaban intending to kill him. Um, so what do I think of this movie? Oh, also. It is the, also the last Harry Potter film to be released on VHS, as well as the last movie to uh, Half Blood Prince to be related, or to be rated PG-13. Because I'm assuming Goblet of Fire and Order of Phoenix were all PG, were both PG-13. I I don't know. But this is the last Harry Potter movie to be related or released on and video, because around 2005, um, home media started upgrading to DVD fully. And I think it was like around 2011 when they started up upgrading to Blu-ray. I don't know. Just a guess. Um, so we have, uh, and we also have new actors. Uh, well, the returning cast is bad. You got Daniel Radcliffe, Rupert Grant, Emma Watson, um, Maggie Smith, Alan Rickman, Ricky Rest in Peace. Um, and in case I haven't said it before, all these Harry Potter reviews are dedicated in memory to Alan Rickman. Sorry, we lost you, man. Farewell, professor, and all stuff. Um, so, yeah, we got, like I said, Daniel Radcliffe, Emma Watson, uh, Rupert Grint, Robbie Coltrane, Richard Griffins, Alan Rickman, Fiona Shaw, Maggie Smith, and Julie Walters. And also Mark um, something or other, the guy who plays Arthur. Mark. Uh, something, something. Probably not gonna say because he doesn't have a big role in this movie. Um. Yeah, it's probably not. It probably doesn't. It doesn't say. But yeah, and then we got new cast members. Um, Gary Oldman, David Thewlis, uh, Emily Tom, Emma Thompson, and Emma Thompson, D Timothy Spall. And replacing uh, Richard Harris, who sadly passed away after Chamber of Secrets, we have Michael Gambon in his debut as Dumbledore, who will take over for the rest of the series. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of sad what happened to Richard Harris, but, you know, it's life. You're born, you live, you die. But still very sad and very tragic that we lost him before the series can be, complete, be completed. Um, but... I think Michael Gambon really makes the role his own. He doesn't try and copy Harris, which I thought was really cool. He tries to make it his own. Um, and you can kind of tell this is a different Dumbledore in a way. 
it's still the same character, but I think just the way the axe is different. And also, not only do we have a new Dumbledore, we have new uniforms. Um, it's not the same uniforms as the last two movies, which, which is kind of strange. I don't know why you... I mean, I would have liked if there be a line in the movies to explain the different uniforms, but then they probably would have had to, find, had to explain the different change in Dumbledore, which... You know what? Dumbledore's a wizard. He could have magically changed his, his appearance. Who knows? <laughs> just just a nitpick I had with the uniforms thing. Not the Dumbledore thing, the uniforms thing. I wish they would have had an explanation. But, who you knows? It's cool. Um, but honestly, um, I actually like this movie. I love this movie. I think it's just as good as the last, just as good as the last two movies. Um, the effects are bit, are better because of the time, you know, they, cause they had two, two years to get the effects. Um, this is a great movie. Um, I love the mystery aspects of this movie because you're led to believe that Sirius Black, this escaped prisoner of Azkaban is actually the guy who kind of sold out. Harry's parents to Voldemort, but in the end of the movie, we are told something very different, which I'm not going to spoil for you guys. For those who have seen the movie, you know the quote-unquote twist, but for those who have not seen it, firstly, why have you not seen this? It's like a 12-year-old movie. Why have you not seen this? Seriously. Secondly, I'm not going to spoil the twist for you guys, um, and I want you guys to actually watch this movie and enjoy it for yourselves. Um... The character Buckbeak, I love how they created him because he's, the effects on Buckbeak is really are really good and they hold up. Um, the Dementors I thought were really cool. They're kind of scary. They're a bit scary and terrifying, which is pretty much the same thing. Who knows? But yeah, those when I first saw this movie, I was frightened by the Dementors. I mean, I'm not now because I'm used to them, obviously. But back then, I was. But by far. My favorite scene in this movie, and probably my favorite scene in the franchise, is when Harry, Ron, and Hermione are going to comfort Hagrid because Buckbeak has been sentenced to death due to attacking Malfoy, which honestly I think Malfoy deserved it. Because he kind of insulted Buckbeak, and Hagrid said it would not be smart to do that. Well, then again, Malfoy's not really smart. I'm not trying to say Tom, Tom Felton is an idiot, but his character is. Not Felton. But yeah, um, Buckley sends to death, and Harry, Ron, and Hermione go down to comfort Hagrid, and just as they're going down, we see Malfoy kind of going, oh, I'm glad this buck, this hypocrite's getting killed. Maybe my father will give me the its head, and I'll get done into the Griffith Gordon coming room. But anyway, Hermione walks up, and she goes to, I think, turn him into a cockroach with her wand, but Ron says, Hermione, no, it's not worth it. And Hermione, or, or Matt flies laughing, thinking that, you know, he's saved, and then Hermione just clocks him one. It's like, I'm like, yeah, now I know there's, there's, I knew there was a reason I love, that I love Hermione. Because she fucking just clocks him one, and it's, it's like, good punch. Just like Harry says in the movie. So yeah, I love that scene. And Malfoy kind of had it coming. The sad thing is, his character does not change because of it. It's like, damn. But it's still funny to see, though. I mean, I wasn't thinking that Punch was going to make him smarten up in the next few movies. He's still a dick in the later movies. But yeah, I thought that scene was really cool. Um, so yeah, the whole cast does great. This is the last movie that Williams would score in this franchise. Not because he passed away, obviously. No, no, no. Williams is still alive. But for some reason, they got a new composer for the next for the subsequent movies. I don't know why, but they did. And just like the last two movies, John Williams knocked out of the park with the music. You know, because every John Williams score I think is really good. Um, even, like I said, his later movies were seen, like, like episode 7, but not, you know, I'm not going to get into that. But yeah, great movie, great effects, awesome characters. Amazing scene, by the way, where, like I said, where Hermione punches him off like, <laughs> best scene of the franchise, in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> and just a great mystery, I guess you say. And a great kind of mystery story. And I think Alfonso Cuaron does a great job with this movie. Because now that we have a different director each movie, pretty much. I mean, up until Order of Phoenix, where it's pretty much the same director the rest, the rest of the way. We kind of get different styles in these movies where this is kind of a darker mystery. tone. This one's a bit darker than the last two. And it has a bit of a mystery tone. 
And in the later movies, we I think by each movie, we get a little bit darker and darker each movie, which is, I think, really cool because we have a different director pretty much each movie. Although, like I said, except for the director of Order of Phoenix goes all the way through the series. <clears throat> but yeah, this is just a great movie. I love this film. What I say is probably my favorite fran in the franchise. I, I can't I can't qualify that as honest, honestly I can't rank these movies from best to worst because like with the Middle Earth movies they're all fucking awesome and I love them all <clears throat> so I can't really rank them so that's my review for Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban hope you guys enjoy this uh, please look forward to my review of Goblet of Fire and the rest of the films um, catch you guys later.